Hello everyone, welcome again to Tech for Psych, where we review the latest devices designed to improve your brain health for many years to come. Today, we're taking a look at Neurovisor versus V-Lite. My name is Dr. Cody Rawl. I am a US Navy trained psychiatrist, and I've been going over the pros and cons of these wearable devices for your brain health on YouTube here for over 10 years now. I also use these devices regularly with my clients, and I'm seeing what works in the real world. So we're gonna take a look at the scientific evidence behind these devices, what they have been used for historically, my personal experience with each one of them, and finally, my opinion on which one you should get. V-Lite and Neurovisor are both devices that use flickering light patterns to affect your brain health, but there are some major differences. Neurovisor aims to improve your brain health by performing stroboscopic light stimulation through your eyes and optic nerves, while V-Lite shines through your nasal cavity and your skull with near-infrared light. Whereas V-Lite typically operates in the 810 nanometer near-infrared light range, which penetrates several centimeters into brain tissue through your skull and through your nose. With Neurovisor, you have an LED panel that you strap around your head, you close your eyes, and it uses visible spectrum LED flickers to activate your brain through entrainment patterns and other deeper cellular processes that we'll talk about here in a little bit. V-Lite, on the other hand, operates in the 810 nanometer near-infrared light range, which has better penetration through skin and skull and into brain tissue. And we know that mitochondria and other cellular structures in cells do react to near-infrared light in a certain way, which is good for V-Lite. Now there's more and more evidence out there that suggests activating neurons and supporting brain tissues with rhythmic light patterns can stimulate pathways that clear out plaques and toxic byproducts that accumulate over time and leads to the processes that contribute to mild cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's disease, and other types of dementia. Now when compared Comparing V-Lite to Neurovisor, I'm going to focus on their potential impact on brain longevity because I think that's what we're all here for at this point. After working with clients in my coaching programs, it's become very clear to me that most of you are concerned about maintaining your cognitive sharpness as you enter middle age and beyond. Most of us at this point have had a loved one affected by Alzheimer's or other types of dementia, and it's a really terrifying thing to watch. My hope is that these devices can help slow or even reverse some of these processes and allow us to make good decisions, stay mentally sharp, be confident, and lead our families into the future and cement our legacy for the next generation. Now, I want to be clear that these are not FDA approved for dementia treatment, but I know that there's a lot of work being done behind the scenes to run clinical trials to show the effects of these devices. And the fact that their side effect profile is so low, I think is a reason to incorporate this into your daily lifestyle. I'll be the first to say that there are a lot of claims being made out there in the marketplace not necessarily by these companies, but many that are similar to them. So I'm here to help set the record straight by taking a look at what science has actually been done, what evidence do we have for devices like V-Lite and Neurovisor, how they differ, and what I think might be the best choice for your own personal goals. If we take a look at the history of these devices, light and sound stimulation devices have been around for decades. I used to think of them as simple brainwave entrainment tools, mainly to help you get into relaxation or to help with meditation but my views changed when I learned about MIT's Alzheimer research using stroboscopic light stimulation at 40 oscillations per second or 40 hertz. In those animal studies, rats that were genetically prone to developing Alzheimer's disease like dementia showed better clearance of beta amyloid plaques when exposed to 40 hertz flickering light. Now they were stimulating the rats' brains through their visual centers and they did find that the plaque clearance was limited to the visual centers of the brain. But when researchers added synchronized audio stimulation at 40 hertz, they also saw benefits in the auditory cortex. Now a lot of work has been done by these research groups in MIT. I want to give them all the credit. Fact Fast forward to their human testing. Based on the research with rat models, they created a pair of glasses and headphones that they could use with human subjects. They conducted a phase two study called the Overture Study. What researchers saw in the data was that there was a 77% reduction in the decline of daily function, a 76% reduction in the rate of normal cognitive decline for Alzheimer's dementia, and a 69% reduction in MRI measured brain volume loss that you normally 
normally find in Alzheimer's dementia. Now those were early but quite promising results and there actually is a phase three trial underway right now. Now, when I was taking a look at the NeuroVisor last year, I got really excited about the MIT research. So I started talking about how the 40 hertz stimulation in NeuroVisor could potentially mimic what was being done in the Cognito Hope trials. Now, I think NeuroVisor is a really nice product. You have this light panel with nine LEDs that magnetically clips to the headset. And then you just put this headband around your head, close your eyes, and you're off to the races for stimulation. They've even created specific protocols that do just 40 hertz stimulation to mimic what has been done in the MIT studies. But I think it's important to note here that when you look at scientific studies, there are a lot of variables and it's hard to apply what happened with one device to another device because there's a lot of different variables. The problem with talking about the MIT studies in relation to NeuroVisor is that NeuroVisor has not replicated those studies with its own equipment. Now, of course, there's a lot of issues when it comes to the wearable device industry. Randomized controlled trial research is very expensive and complex, which is why most health and wellness companies and products rely more on theoretical overlap rather than actually doing the studies themselves. So although it's tempting to assume that the 40 hertz flicker with NeuroVisor would create the same neuroprotective effects as Cognito, there are a lot of unknowns that could affect the efficacy of the device to include specific wavelengths of light used with the LED panels, light intensity, geometry of stimulation, time and duration of daily use, and whether there is something unique in the Cognito Therapeutics design that drives their results that is left out of NeuroVisor, for example. That's why if you truly wanted the neuroprotective effects demonstrated in the MIT studies, you would be using the Cognito Therapeutics device itself once it's FDA approved for mild cognitive impairment. Now the phase three HOPE trial is underway with top line results expected in August 2026 and potential FDA approval in 2027. But I myself as a physician and a scientist cannot positively say that NeuroVisor will have the same neuroprotective results as what is being shown in the MIT studies with the Cognito setup. Now this is the part of the video where we finally get to what VLight has done and here, now that you have the context about what research looks like instead of theoretical overlap, I can really highlight all the work that VLight has been doing in their clinics and labs and with third-party institutions. I've been so excited about VLight that I actually just went to their meditation conference in Toronto last week and I visited their VLight clinic and lab in person and it was really impressive. If you look at their website, you can see all the research that they've done to actually demonstrate that this this device works, that there's a penetration into brain tissue of the red light and near infrared light, and that there is a true physiological impact from their device specifically at the near infrared spectrum of 810 nanometers with sufficient irradiance, which is the amount of power of red light to get through the scalp and skull to reach cortical tissue at biologically relevant doses. A lot of other red light therapy devices on the market do not hit that bar of actually demonstrating that their devices do that. Either their power density is too low or the light scatters wrong, but V-Light has backed up their efficacy with EEG, quantitative EEG, and even fMRI and MRI scans to show increases in alpha and gamma power, better network coherence, and real brain hemodynamic changes. Now, we know that the red light is getting through the scalp and the skull and activating mitochondria within the neurons. This stimulates the cytochrome C oxidase pathway and gets a boost of ATP, which allows the neurons to have more energy to fire, communicate, and repair. They've also shown more vasodilation from the red light therapy treatment, which brings more oxygen and nutrients into your neurons and allows them to clear out the waste that is thought to build up over time to create different types of dementia. There's more and more evidence that it supports the glymphatic system, which is the brain's overnight cleaning system and allows it to clear out beta amyloid plaque during the day and especially at night. And on a microscopic level, they're even finding that the red light stimulates tubulin and microtubule stability that might lead to better plasticity and signal support that promotes longevity of your brain. So not only is the red light actually creating a subjective experience of, hey, it's actually making me feel more alert, but there's actually 
really scientific cellular and vascular changes that are going on in your brain when you use a V-Light device. They've documented a plethora of different outcomes based on their peer-reviewed research that you can take a look at at their website. One of their peer-reviewed studies that really caught my attention was looking at mild cognitive impairment using V-Light NeuroGamma. Patients used it 20 minutes a day at home and saw improvements in executive function, increased functional connectivity of their brain, better resting state connectivity, and even increased thalamic volume on structural brain MRI. So there's real structural and network level changes happening safely at home with this red light therapy stimulation from V-Light. They've been spending a lot of time on traumatic brain injury and concussion, showing that there's increased gray matter volume, improved cerebral blood flow, better connectivity, and neuropsychiatric gains in memory and focus for people that have concussion that use this device. They had the BYU football team use it over an entire season, and towards the end of the season, the players that were using the device showed better neuromuscular control and balance, and less cognitive effects from repeated head collisions throughout the season. And even for performance and meditation, there's a double-blind EEG study which showed that a single gamma session from V-Light produced increases in beta-gamma suppressed delta-theta. And I know from a neurofeedback perspective, that's the brainwave patterns that you want for focused attention, deep meditation, and overall clarity during the day. They even did a study in 2023 which took a look at creativity after neurogamma sessions and found that one 20 minute session increased divergent thinking on gold standard tests for fluency and flexibility in creative thinking and more originality on picture creation tests. Now, I don't know a supplement that does all that in one session. So, I mean, this is really unique effects that they're getting out of the V-Lite device. They've taken a look at contact sport athletes and veterans with PTSD. They've shown improved sleep quality, better mood and depression scores less chronic pain, and the ability to bring your nervous system into a more regulated state. So here's the big picture. Neurovisor mostly relying on theoretical overlap with the MIT studies, whereas with V-Light has multiple, multiple human studies, randomized controlled trials across cognition, brain injury indexes, brainwave research, creativity, sleep, mood, and structural changes on brain MRI. And honestly, looking at all their work really for me just raises the bar on what evidence is required to make claims in the wearable brain health space. Now, the actual experience of using these devices is obviously very important as well. Neurovisor has these very entertaining light shows and they have all these psychedelic patterns that really keep you engaged and entertained. Some protocols tend to be more energizing, others tend to calm you down. They make claims that it can improve your energy, but for me, honestly, after a Neurovisor session, my brain feels more like it had a workout, like I'm a little worn out, which is fine if it's leading to more energy the next day. But again, where is the evidence for this? The other thing about Neurovisor is that when you're using it, it's totally occupying your visual and auditory centers. So you can't really do anything else, but just sit there and experience it. And some people just love that. That's what they want. For me, I have to meditate every day. So that becomes a core part of my routine. And I just don't don't consider that type of sensory experience as being core to my meditation practice. When I meditate, I want complete darkness and I even have earplugs in so that I can focus on empty space and draw out that universal energy pool that's so nourishing during meditation. And if I have something like the Neurovisor on, all the lights and sound just feel like stimulation and not allowing me to actually experience jhana in meditation. But one of the key differences for me is that with the V-Light Red Light Therapy, you can put on the Duo 4, for example, and get full head coverage, which support faster brainwave frequencies, which can help improve your meditation and increase blood flow and energy, all while not taking up my visual or auditory centers. So I feel like I can use V-Light during meditation, but I can't use Neurovisor during meditation. And at the V-Light meditation conference that I just went to, they suggested stimulating up to a thousand hertz for advanced meditation sessions. Personally, anything above 40 hertz stimulation with the V-Light tends to energize me. Sometimes I enjoy starting slower in the alpha range and then ramping up, especially when I'm using the Neuro Pro 2. And overall, I just feel good doing it because I feel like it's improving the energy of my brain to get better meditation sessions. But at the same time, I'm improving blood flow and potentially helping clear out metabolic byproducts that improve my brain longevity. And then again, we have to consider the cost and the price points have been changing a little bit from year to year. So take this with a grain of salt, but Neurovisor is coming in at about 
dollars right now, which is a bit more than the V-Lite MIP 810 intranasal unit, which is about 400. Now the V-Lite intranasal stimulates the frontal lobe through your nasal canal. And I think it's a great option, but it doesn't come with an app or anything. You're just going to get the red light therapy effects on your frontal lobe, which again, if you trust the science, you probably want to go with this one. But I will say that if you want more flexibility and entertainment and an exploration through different light and sound stimulation effects, maybe you want to go with the Neurovisor instead at that price point. There is some evidence that Neurovisor can help with brainwave flexibility, but again, this is like tertiary evidence. They don't have any real randomized controlled trial data to show that conclusively with the Neurovisor device. So it really depends on what you want. If you want a sensory experience with a lot of fun apps and protocols to experience different psychedelic light patterns and use it to relax before bed or potentially wake yourself up in the morning and set your circadian rhythm with using the Neurovisor, I think that there's a lot of benefit there. But if you're primarily concerned about brain health and longevity, I would advocate for the V-Lite devices. And a lot of this is just based on how much evidence they've accumulated. I would advocate for the V-Lite NeuroDuro 4 at around $2,500. This has LEDs that specifically target your default mode network, which is really highly implicated in different types of dementia. Really, as far as brain health wearables go that you don't have to get a prescription for, I think this is the device with the most evidence on the market right now. And if you wanna take things up to the next level with your brain health longevity, take a look at the NeuroPro 2, which has 40% more irradiant power. You can also work with a provider to custom design different LED stimulation protocols based on brain maps. In my program, we're using the MindLift system to do sequential quantitative EEG mapping, and then we're customizing the NeuroPro 2 stimulation according to the brain map, which can have significant utility. The new NeuroPro 2 black version just pairs with your regular phone. You download the app and you're off to the races. Now, I do have to state here, remember that neither of these devices are considered a medical treatment. I can only talk about them as health wellness performance tools, but take a look at the research and come to your own conclusions about what benefit they might be able to bring you as far as brain health longevity goes. And if you really want to take things to the next level and get a sequential quantitative EEG brain map, I am doing that through my coaching program. So I'll drop a link here in the description of this video if you want to check out my program. And if you want to go through more of the evidence for V-Lite and all the studies that they present on their website, take a look at this video here and I'll see you on the other side.